Welcome to a video version of the Faster, Easier, Better Show podcast. I'm your co-host, Ellen Goodwin, along with my co-host, Lee Silver, here in my home office. Although That's it looks awesome. like there's a mountain somewhere, which I think is where we all would love to be. <laughs> I am in my home office. I've just green screened it uh, just to be different. Uh, I have to say my office right now is not as perfectly orderly as yours today. I know. So you might be out wondering why our podcast is actually coming to you as a video. Well, today we're going to do what we like to call deep cuts on working from home. Now, all of us remember songs on albums that were, were not the number one song, but they're way in the album. And it was really a much better song than the one that got all the radio play. And so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at, at some of the ways that you can work better from home than you're seeing in the media right now. You're seeing a lot of like dress for success, you know, put your clothes on, you know, have a schedule, all these things. But Lee and I have worked from home 25 years each. So we've got a lot of information about how to work from home. And we're sharing it with you now and we are available to share it with businesses, other people around, just hit us up. You'll have all of our contact information uh, at the end of the show and at the beginning. So uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna look at three things today. We're gonna look at mindset, we're gonna look at environment and technology. And technology comes last because if you don't have the mindset and the environment, all the technology in the world doesn't mean anything. So let's start with mindset. Lee, what do you, kick it off. Well, I wear this bracelet and I have for several months now. Um, I call it every breath you take. Like, this, hey, it's a sting song, uh, please. But when things are good, even our mind drifts towards the bad. But when things are bad, it's hard to not just be surrounded and always feel like, oh, boy, I don't know what's happening. We're at, we're at, we don't control what's happening and we feel powerless. And what we can control is what's happening in the moment and where the, what we focus on just getting the work done. We talk about, you and I talk a lot about overcoming procrastination. The biggest thing is fear of the future, keeps you yes. from doing, doing the present. And fear of what's going to happen with our situation, our, I mean all of us, keeps us from, I'm just going to sit and I don't feel like doing anything. There's no hope. There's no, so for me, this is just to remind me. So I just take a deep, I see it on my wrist or I'll snap myself with it and remind me to take a deep breath. Just control what you can control in the moment. Enjoy the time with your family, the time um, where, you, you know, for me anyway, my work has stopped. So a lot of the pressure and deadlines have gone away. And I, that sounds like a bad, it is a bad thing because I, I love what I do and I want to do more of it. And I wish I was making money. Um, but I feel like if I'm just focused on right now, I feel a lot better about things than if I worry about the future. Yeah, control what you can control. And think about that. Think what you can control. My favorite mindset thing is to eliminate your productivity pitfalls. And we all have them. You know, we will be going along in our day and then we'll do something that just stops everything. One of mine that I have taken care of would be if I get up in the morning and the first thing I put on is my comfy sweatshirt, my yoga pants, and I go get a cup of tea and get in my comfy chair. That comfy chair and those comfy clothes, they are just like a stop sign for getting anything done. So in the morning, I put on my workout wear and I might still sit and have a cup of coffee, but I know that I have what my next step is, that's to go work out. And I avoid that comfy chair during the day. Sometimes I'll put books on it so that I can't just sit down because if I sit down, all productivity stops. So everybody has a productivity pitfall. And it might be, it might be as simple as like, oh, you finish one project and you pick up your phone and you're just gonna, oh, let me check. And then 20 minutes later, you're still on it. So you figure out, okay, I lock the phone and I, I put it in a drawer, I put it in the other room. I make it impossible to go into that pitfall. Well, that's good, that's good. See, I'm dressed up <laughs> from the waist I, up. I know, from the waist <laughs> up. <laughs> got dressed, I got dressed. You know, you wanna be a professional, you have to look like a professional. 
dress like a professional. Once you're in your comfy clothes, your mindset's more towards personal, less professional. Exactly. So let me run through a couple of things real quickly because I know we're trying to keep this within it's a It's very time. short, yes. So I think when um, we stay busy, our mind is kept away from drifting off into the bad place. So just staying busy. And if it's productive things, that's great. So we're doing staying busy with things we should be doing and even could be doing, meaning, hey, I'm gonna do this project for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna do this you know, for work, and then I'm gonna do this for five minutes, and then it's for 15 minutes. But you can bounce back and forth as long as you keep moving forward. Just keep moving, it sounds like doors. Keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> but it's true that if your mind is occupied with a task and it's busy, it's not gonna be drifting towards uh, you know, what could keep you from, like you said, ruining, one thing could ruin your whole day. Mm -hmm. I would also say helping other people is another thing. We shouldn't compare ourselves to others. Some people are, are, are thriving. They're not thriving, but they're, they, found they're, they're, they have income. They have, uh, they're still working. They're maybe getting double pay. There are all kinds of reasons why we could look at them and say, and be, we should be happy for them. And we should also know that there's someone that's doing better than us and someone that's doing worse than us. So let's see if we can help that person that's doing worse than us because in our problem, seem less and we're doing something positive and productive so find something you can do for others as a way of keeping the mindset on the positive i mean basically what i'm saying is stay positive and don't panic that's that's the message i'm trying to say is stay positive use some reminder that to, to focus on just what you're doing now and try and do something positive for you and for somebody else um, i would say this is the time to maybe you take your phone around and take pictures of things that make you smile that make you happy as a way of staying in the moment and as a way of reminding yourself of all the good that's coming from this, not all the good, but trying right. to find silver lining. Um, this is the time to sharpen your saw, as Stephen Covey used to say, work on improving your skills, update your resume, be ready to hit the ground running when things get going in a better direction. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm gonna throw in one short one and we're gonna move to environment. And that is, guard against Parkinson's law. And Parkinson's law says that a task will expand to fill the time available for it. So if you've got a short little task and you give yourself, oh, you know, I've got half an hour to get this done, that task is gonna take half an hour. But if you set a timer and you give yourself five minutes to do it, you'll get it done in five minutes. So guard against Parkinson's law. All right, let's move on to environment. And I touched on one of these already when I was talking about the phone, but this one's so important. Hide your distractions. Hide the things you don't want to be distracted by. So if it is your phone, if it's your phone, then make it a point to put it in a drawer, put it in the other room, turn it off. It's just like hiding chocolate. You know, if you've got chocolate in the house, and that'll be a temptation to me. But if I have chocolate, boy, it's in the freezer. I can't see it, I can't eat it fast, boom. So hide your distractions. Um, and that could be whether it's a physical one or it's on your computer or on your phone. Um, you can block things. There's all sorts of blockers. I'll, I'll just tell you a couple that you can, you can use freedom or self-control. Those both work on your computer. Uh, flipped is an awesome one to use on your phone because it will lock you out. So uh, hide your stuff. What's yours? Well, along the same lines, it kind of ties in with what I was going to say is, I mean, I believe that you should work with your natural tendencies. And organized means you can find what you need when you need it. All right? So that said, it is nice. To, I'm, a, I'm a right brain, creative person who likes things out. But if you look around, <laughs> I mean, it's, you, I use colors and I use clear containers and I use the wall as a way of keeping things out but organized. And there's something about cleaning up. And, or, and straightening up that makes you, it's a, it's a great way to end the day. It's a couple of check marks off your checklist and a, a little release of the endorphins. But it also, when you come back the next day to a clean, organized office, and I, I say clean, organized, I just mean tidied up. It doesn't mean immaculate. I don't think that's realistic. But now is the time where we can cut the clutter. We've got the time. We never have time to go through our old files. And when you do that, sometimes it'll stir up some positive things. And some of the things you might find, uh, press clippings or a rave review or something your boss gave you as a nice note, put those up 
as a reminder of how great you are. Because without the constant, without the feedback of bumping into people at work and having that, you know, re review all the time or, you know, even informal, we feel a little, a mm, little inadequate. So I have on my wall, you know, all kinds of positive, my trophies and my books are all up. Uh, so I can see him. Reminds me, I, I, I don't suck hard no, or bad. And also, <laughs> hey, one thing I started putting up um, is my advisors. And uh, like Steve Jobs is one of my idols. And I would ask myself, if Steve Jobs was stuck in the situation that we're in right now, what would he do? And you could pick Oprah. You could pick uh, whoever you admire and use that as a barometer of, okay, some of these people turn limes into margaritas. Wait, no, that's in it. Lemons into lemons. <laughs> And, and I think it's positive, it, you know, maybe you can't talk to somebody, but you could say, what would they say if I could talk to them? I like that. I like that. And, and my last one for environment is schedule your distractions, which sounds really kind of weird because we're supposed to be avoiding distractions, but distractions are always, always going to be there. And so if you start your day, you've got your list of what do or you do it the night before which is even better block in time where you can be distracted you tell yourself you know at 11 o'clock I get 20 minutes of social media or checking email or playing a video game and I get another 20 minutes at 2 o'clock your brain now sees that okay distractions are there I get time for them and so it doesn't spend all this time looking for distractions because you know you're going to be able to have those distractions and on the oh no no go ahead i'm sorry yes. <laughs> you said something um when we were recording a, a podcast about having a pad next to you to if you see something around the house that needs to be fixed or that you need to do um instead of doing it stopping what you're doing which is working and going to do it write it down so you don't forget it and yet it doesn't stop it maybe stops you for 10 seconds but you're still in the work mode. Is, Absolutely. Is do it? Absolutely. And then one other thing with timing distractions, I mean, I'm talking about distractions you know that you enjoy, uh, but then there's all these distractions, especially right now, whole families are working together or, or like thrust in together that they're just hanging out, uh, trying to work, but the kids are there, there's distractions. So you might also want to build in a little white space in your day. And that you might put some in the morning and some in the afternoon. And again, this could be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, but a block that allows you to catch up. So if you get distracted, you still have that cushion. So plan for your distractions. And I would Any say along those same lines before we move on is, you know, the kids are home. Sometimes the best way we learn is to teach. You know, we need, sometimes you, you teach what you need to learn or you learn better by telling it teaching it to somebody else. So this is, you know, kids are at work, you know, we, we take your kid to work day. <laughs> now every day. This day, every day. Work. But you show them like how a website, the underneath uh, the hood stuff works. Uh, maybe teach, show them what you do and how you do it as a reminder of, oh yeah, that is what I do and how I do it, why I do it so well. Um, so that could be a positive, uh, getting them involved, you know, and take Absolutely. advantage of play, play, I mean, you, I mean, your kids <laughs> uh, doing work around the house that uh, for chores and things that you would have normally done that they can do that gives you, frees up your time to work. I like it, I like it. So we talked about mindset and environment and those are so important. And the last thing is, is technology. Now you probably have a lot of technology that you have brought from the office that you use a lot, but there's also technology out there that you might not have had to deal with because you do have the office. So uh, we're gonna just talk very briefly about uh, different apps and technology that you can use. So my first one is a timer. And you know this, because I talk about timers all the time. This is my favorite timer. <laughs> and it's, it's just a regular kitchen timer. It's just kind of cute. Um, and I use it, I set it for 20 minutes. And I will write, write on a post-it note, like four things I need to get done. And I'll just follow that. Timers are, are so great. Um, so I use that. I use an interval timer. Just, you can get interval timers for any phones and they're free. And you set up, I set up one that's 
10 minutes on, two minutes off, and I do five of those in an hour. And those 10 minutes, I just crank through stuff. You get a two minute break, stand up, move around, get back to 10 minutes. So no surprise there, my favorite technology, timer. So that was kind of a low tech one. What do you got? I'm actually going even lower tech, but then I'm <laughs> gonna try and go back to the, uh, to the phone and apps. But a lot of people, they found that watch sales dropped by almost 75%. A lot of people don't wear a watch. So they use their phone as their means of knowing what time it is. But when you're working at home, it really helps to have a giant clock or a small clock that's right in your face. Either one. I have clocks all over the place. So I have a better sense of time. You use a timer. I'm just aware of time by seeing the clock. And I like to set like you, I time myself and then try and beat that time. Or I challenge myself to maybe instead of four things, I'm gonna get, try and get six things done. And even if I only get four, I worked harder than I would have if I tried to get two. As you said, time, your task expands to the time. Yeah, that, that is awesome. And, and with the clocks, Studies have shown that it's better to have an analog clock than a digital clock because digital doesn't show you the passage of time, whereas an analog clock does. So um, there you are. <laughs> so um, I would definitely do the clocks and do analog. Um, you know what my clock is? The battery life of my phone. <laughs> because we have about a minute left. <laughs> 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 um, we've only got a couple minutes left, so uh, I want to talk. I, I mentioned earlier freedom and uh, self control. Great apps to put on your computer. You block uh, whatever sites that you don't want to be distracted by, they just lock you out. You can't go for whatever time period you decide. So those are awesome. You can also get one called Flipped. For your phone and that works i believe just on android but there's also ones for um apple phones so uh, yeah and i would say separate your your on your on your phone or computer your browsers so you don't have all the mm. distractions that you have in your personal browser of links and bookmarks and tools that and things out and, you know maybe even split, you know you could do a different user maybe even do a whole different user so your screen on your computer is just work related and maybe your phone has the browser that just doesn't have all the things you've been shopping for and looking at and <laughs> keep it, keep it work and, and home separate. Perfect. Perfect. Where we go uh, or I run out of battery because you can continue on. After no, I go. no, I think, you know what? Don't worry. We've, we've hit our time because we wanted to keep this short again, Ellen Goodwin. I'm a productivity trainer. I can be reached at Ellen at ellengoodwin.com. Lee. Silver and I love giving things away. So I created a, a pretty large, I call it a mini book, but it's a booklet of all the things, not all, but a lot we talked about and many more free at leesilver.com. That's L-E-E-S-I-L-B-E-R. Just go to free and you can read or download the whole booklet. Excellent. So um, we're going to do more of these, but we wanted to be able to help you work from home know the deep cuts of working from home and you're going to do a lot better. Thanks for being with us today and we'll join you again soon.